I came home after, after my Navy service and I got, um, I started working in an architectural office. And after a while, I began to have an idea that it would be fun, to, might be fun to do a kid, a kid's book about cities, you know, how they, uh, how you experience them, how they get built, how they affect your lives, how you affect the way that they develop, all kinds of things. And I applied for a grant, uh, and I got it. You know, the old, there's an old saying that when God wants to punish you, he grants your wishes. And this is what happened with this thing. Uh, I started, I worked for about three or four months on it until I was literally up to my neck in little three-by-five cards with footnote kinds of things on them. And I decided that's not what I want to do. So I went away and took a little vacation, and to keep my mind off the city book, I began scribbling a, a little story, uh, which ultimately became the Phantom Tollbooth. I n had no idea I was starting a book. It was just something to, you know, really to keep my mind away from the other thing. And it was triggered, interestingly, by I went out for dinner just before I went on this vacation, and I was, they were crowded. It was right in my neighborhood. So I was sitting out in the lounge, and a, about a 10-year-old boy walked out. I think he had finished his dinner, and his parents probably said, go bother someone else in the restaurant, not us. Yeah. He came out, sat next to me, and he looked at me and said, what's the biggest number there is? So I said, well, what do you think? And he reeled off a you know, million, drill, trillion, skadillion kind of a number. And when he finished, I said, well, add one to that. And he looked at me and it kind of, so then I m uh, made a number up for him and he very quickly understood. He said, well, add one to that. And we talked for about 15 minutes. It was wonderful. It was two mathematical illiterates talking about infinity. And it really started me thinking about the things that always not so much bugged me that I didn't understand. I understood them somewhat conceptually, but I didn't understand why they were there at all. I mean, well, why we had to concern ourselves with things like that. Uh, and I was a great troublemaker in school for that reason. I, and I always do, did, I did assignments, but I always did them in my way in kind of a different f focus on them. And as I began working on this, I began to remember more and more about the problems I had as, a, as a, about a 10-year-old or 11-year-old. And the thing just began to, began to grow. And uh, started, I finished about 50 pages of the book, and a friend said, she worked in publishing, said, let me show this to one of the editors. And luckily, she showed it to an editor who was not a children's book editor, uh, a wonderful man named Jason Epstein, who uh, worked for Random House and was a very important editor. And at that time, he was producing a series of books, reprints from classic children's literature, mostly English, and putting them out in this country. Uh, and there was a bit of a disaster because the books were much too literate for the age groups that they were meant for in this country. We had, that was a stage in the early 1960s where we were very busy dumbing down books as fast as we could. Uh, nobody should ever read anything that they didn't already know. So, um, so his books didn't do very well. Mine was the only original that they did. It was called Looking Glass Library. And then when they folded up, that went right into Random House. But anyway, that, that sort of started me writing. But all through my life, I had an architectural practice. And then I, I started teaching, which I love doing and uh, at both in New York and Pratt Institute and at Hampshire College in, uh, in Amherst. So. Funding for adlit.org is provided by the Ann B. and Thomas L. Friedman Family Foundation. For more information on adolescent literacy, please visit us online at www.adlit.org.